Greetings, everybody. I've really enjoyed my brief exposure to uh, Forever Green. I started doing pre-med in college and I ended up getting uh, my acceptance letter from Harvard Medical School where I spent a lot of time learning about pathogenesis of disease but not necessarily nutrition. And similarly, my five years at Mayo Clinic as an orthopedic surgeon uh, was spent mostly dealing with musculoskeletal pathology, not necessarily discussing with patients how to stop the process of weight gain. And then I spent uh, another two years doing a foot and ankle fellowship uh, in foot and ankle reconstruction and shoulder and knee reconstruction. And now I've been practicing orthopedics for 15 years. I love that practice. I love the privilege of serving humanity. Uh, however, the modern medical industry is ready for a change, particularly at this, uh, at this crossroads where patients are really concerned about their energy levels, their body mass index, and their capacity to carry on with gainful employment and recreational pursuits. But as I've been perusing in my mind the thoughts as I've, I've approached this very exciting time with this particular nutritional supplement. I've thought about all the great technological advances of mankind, particularly within the 19th and 20th century. And if you think in the past, present, and future of where we are, both with industrial techno technological advances and healthcare, it's fascinating to look in the past. When you look at the quantum leaps in remarkable discovery. We had James Watt come up with the steam engine which launched us into the Industrial Revolution. Uh, you look at Alexander Graham Bell and the simple discovery of the telephone. You look at Thomas Edison and the light bulb and then you look at the medical discovery starting with Louis Pasteur and microbiology. Uh, we didn't really know about microbes until then. And then Joseph Lister, who virtually was laughed at by his colleagues in the 1880s when he came up with the strange idea of aseptic surgical technique. Interesting concept. But what was interesting is before that quantum occurred, he was laughed at. Uh, then, we, of course, we had Alexander Fleming with penicillin. And then, of course, uh, Watson and Crick, the great discovery of DNA which launched molecular biology to where we are now. Modern medicine is a wonderful realm. And despite all of these wonderful quantum leaps in technology, the world of modern medicine has been littered with significant mistakes, some subtle, some not so subtle. Thalidomide in the 1960s, if you remember, Women would present with nausea and vomiting, typical for the first trimester of pregnancy, and they would be prescribed thalidomide. Well, within two or three months, we started having horrible birth defects. Now, that's pretty dramatic, but let's look at the more subtle difficulties we face within the last 30, 40 years of healthcare. In the 1970s, the Nixon administration in the United States was coming out with a lot of subsidies for corn farming and high fructose corn syrup entered the market as the main additive. And then as time developed, we had those significant additives being put in the center aisle of the grocery stores. And in tandem with that event occurring, we also had the American government and the FDA and the American Medical Association coming out with the discoveries that, well, it's saturated fats. and diets high in cholesterol that are the cause of coronary artery disease, of hypertension, of kidney disease. And so we have to cut that out. We need to go on low fat, low, particularly saturated fats and low cholesterol diets. Well, in the last 30 years since that announcement occurred, we've had people look at labels and say, well, okay, it's low fat, low in cholesterol, I can eat everything I want. Sugars, cakes, cookies, as long as it's low fat, low uh, uh, cholesterol, we can go ahead and do that. Well, for those of you who have seen the maps in the United States, there's been a sharp hockey stick in body mass index and obesity. And why is that? Well, we now have the greatest institutions in the United States coming out and explaining why. We have institutions such as the Cleveland Clinic, Mayo Clinic, Johns Hopkins, Stanford, Northwestern, Vanderbilt, I can go down the list talking about how we have been self-deceived. We 
thought it was cholesterol, we thought it was saturated fats, but actually it was the carbohydrates, particularly the refined man-made carbohydrate preparations that have driven us into this very, very scary realm. Clearly exercise is helpful. Clearly the solution is lifestyle choices. It doesn't mean more metformin for those type 2 diabetics. It doesn't mean uh, more antihypertensive medications. The interesting thing is yesterday in clinic I saw 30 patients, five or six of whom were in their 40s and 50s, 250, 300 pounds plus, and they simply had given up on life. They were like the biblical prodigal son that was out sowing their wild oats and have pretty much decided that life, life is over. We're calling with this particular product for people to finally come back home from those poor lifestyle choices. And this is where we enter the world of ketogenic diets or ketogenic supplements. Now, the idea of moving into ketosis we've heard discussed with this seminar and multiple in the past. But this particular device, I'll call it, this particular supplement is indeed revolutionary. It is a quantum leap into the future as a solution to move people away from refined carbohydrates and move people into a lifestyle of energy that will be able to make them more functional recreationally with gainful employment and make them more functional family members, more functional husbands and wives, uh, parents. It is going to dramatically move people into a state of existence. This window of mortality, this narrow window of mortality can be cut short so soon and unnecessarily by poor lifestyle choices. Now, when it comes to this particular product, that is exogenous ketones, taking them by mouth, this has not been available ever. The realities are beta-hydroxybutyrate, acetyl acetate, these ketones, which are the bottom, the, the, the basic building block, power-packed energy packet of fat metabolism. Taking that exogenously has not been an option until these proprietary preparations where they're in a packet where you have grams and grams of ketones that you can take. It tells your body that you are in a starvation mode and it starts burning fat immediately uh, as if you were in starvation mode. And frankly, that's how mankind is. These ketones have brought us full circle to how our own endogenous inherent DNA was designed to help us function in a world of feast or famine. For 7,000 years or for 50,000 years, depending on what altar you worship, whether you believe in intelligent design or just mother nature, the stark reality is we are a species that has existed on eating when the meat, when the berries, when the nuts are there, and then it may be another four or five days. Now we all heard Dr. Hack talk the other day about how important those four or five days are. We need to maintain our mental acuity so we can go take down that woolly mammoth or that saber-toothed tiger. And we need to do it without feeling like we're starving to death. We need to do it with energy, with spit and vinegar. We need to have the energy to go take down that saber-toothed tiger. And so that's what this exogenous ketone, this intake of oral-based, prepared, proprietary beta-hydroxybutyrate will do. Now, the exciting thing that that, that, that is just overwhelming to me is it's a wonderfully tasting supplement uh, and it's very filling and it lasts for many, many hours from the time you take it in the morning until the afternoon. Satiety is the clinical term of feeling satisfied uh, with your appetite, uh, that you're not craving those carbohydrates. That's what's been remarkable for me. I uh, will stand 
uh, in front of this camera and tell you I am a self-described carbaholic. I haven't fallen off the wagon now for five months. And I'll attribute that success to one thing, exogenous ketones. I was able to make that transition within 48 hours. The, the transition is far too difficult. One last thing I'd like to mention if I could, is how exciting this is for all demographics. This isn't just to help me as an orthopedic surgeon help my patients lose weight so they can then be cleared for their joint replacement. By the way, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services are now restricting who they will allow to have joint replacements because when you're big and you're fat, the joint, the bone prosthesis interface loosens and you, the complications are, it can't be sustained by a government who pays for those joints. But I'm just as interested in all demographics of society. We've talked about the adolescents who are now facing obesity. We've talked about young adults who are spending time in front of computers instead of being out exercising. We've talked about uh, perimenopausal women who are struggling to find that energy to function throughout the day that has been very, very difficult. We're talking about traumatic brain injury patients. We know that ketones have a significant neuroprotective effects for both peripheral neurological manifestation of, nerve, uh, of neurological disease as well as central uh, neurological manifestations. Speaking of neurology and speaking of our central nervous system and our spinal cord, we have opiate receptors and that's what heroin and cocaine attaches to that gives us those overpowering remarkable sense of well-being well we know what happens those those very fulfilling well-being sensations only last for a few hours and then we bonk we hit uh, a withdrawal and it's a horrible existence well similarly when we take exogenous carbohydrates, meaning we eat carbohydrates that are refined. It gives us that sense of well-being. It gives us that remarkable satisfaction, but it is short-lived. You're looking at a guy that every night after a long day in the operating room and after my 30-mile-a-day bicycle commute would sit in front of my TV, ritualistically lay out my 10 Chips Ahoy, my 10 Oreos, and my 10 Nutter Butters. And, and it was delicious. And I would pack those down and that was my reward. But I'll tell you, it came with the price. Ketones also affect inflammation and carbohydrates are directly, uh, the direct cause of inflammation. And that is the pathogenesis of much of the disease that is associated with carbohydrates. We eat the carbohydrates, it causes inflammation of the linings of our arteries, it causes them to scar, harden, attract cholesterol, and then we develop the coronary artery disease, the kidney disease, the hypertension. It is a reversible process. And so we come full circle. 30 years ago, we, some of us intentionally in the food industry, some of us intentionally to try to help people with their health, strongly suggested that diets high in saturated fats and cholesterol were destroying us. Well, we were wrong. And now the greatest medical minds are admitting this, including our cardiovascular surgeons. And now we know what the truth is. And we also know what the solution is. Just as Alexander Graham Bell came out with a telephone, just as, uh, just as James Watt came out with the steam engine, just as Thomas Edison came out with the light bulb, we are now facing the most exciting quantum in healthcare, and that is exogenous ketones. And that's just not a testimony from this solitary orthopedic surgeon. We are on the verge of a revolution.